Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Corner HVAC. I am glad you joined me today. I have something very important to talk to you about, but first I wanted to talk to you about a little adventure that we're taking around here. Uh, we are starting another YouTube channel. It is called The Starter Ranch. Uh, it's gonna be an awesome channel with a bunch of videos of different things we're doing around the home here, uh, but check it out. Um, there's several videos, a lot of shorts on there already. Uh, we'll have a lot more content once it gets a little bit warmer outside. Uh, but it's The Starter Ranch. If you can't find it on YouTube, just Google hashtag The Starter Ranch. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like it and share with all your friends. It's just the right thing to do. And uh, if you're not subscribed here to Andy's Corner HVAC, please do so. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It means so much to us. Uh, I, we are trying to hit that thousand uh, subscriber mark here pretty quick. Uh, we've set a deadline on what we want to see, and we are so close. We just need a few more, so make sure you hit that button. And then check out the Starter Ranch and go ahead and do the same thing there. That'd be awesome. So what I actually wanted to talk about today was, you know, I get asked the question all the time, you know, should I fix it or should I replace it? And that is a pretty important question. You know, all these clients out there, they always say, well, what would you do? What would you do if this was your house? Well, I mean, I do heating and air for a living, so you probably already know my answer as much as I do, um, that, you know, hey, just replace it. Why not, right? Um, but no, that's, that's not necessarily true. It depends on what's going on. You know, we have to evaluate each situation a little bit differently. Uh, we have to take a look at, you know, the age of the equipment, the condition of the equipment, how long we're going to be in the home, um, you know, all these different kinds of things. You know, all those variables go in there. Uh, budget is number one. I mean, you have to look at what your budget is because, you know, if, if you can't afford to replace it, then it's time to fix it. There's nothing wrong with that um, as long as that's the right choice. You know, if you don't have it, have too many options with it, then so be it. Fix it and keep it running on down the road. But as far as, you know, when it does come time to decide which route it is time to go, you got to make sure you look at everything. You know, budget definitely is in there. Uh, then we have to look at uh, the cost of the repair, you know, you have a service guy come out, they take a look, they say, you know, part X has failed and needs to be replaced. You know, the first thing you got to ask is, is, you know, what's that cost? Um, and, you know, what, what does this mean to my system? Because I, I think we should be asking service text questions. I think we should have somewhat of an idea of what's going on and why they want to replace parts and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, with our guys, we've got like a six step process of, um, you know, how to, identify the problem um, and explain that to a homeowner, what it is, what it's, what it does, uh, what it costs, why it needs to be done and all this kind of stuff. But there, we, we've got a process with that. And I think most service techs need to be doing that. If you're not, maybe uh, you need to reevaluate how you're looking at things because there are homeowners, the clients need to know what's going on. And if you are a client out there, I want to make sure you know what I'm talking about, or at least somewhat. You don't necessarily have to be all technical about it and know all the exact terms and that kind of stuff because, I mean, that's what you pay us to do, right? So, you know, you shouldn't have to do that kind of thing, but it is good to have a, at least a little bit of a grasp of what we're talking about. So, you know, find out what that repair is and find out what that repair is going to cost. You know, one of my biggest things is, you know, set a price point. Uh, with, with that system, you know, if it's getting close to springtime, summertime here. So, you know, if somebody comes out and says, well, I've got part X has failed on your air conditioner. Well, if that price is more, you know, for me, $500 is the amount. So if that part is $500 or more, it's probably, start to, it's probably time to start thinking about replacement. Now, that being said, with some of the prices on some of the repairs and the parts and all these things that are going on in the world right now, you know, prices are skyrocketing on all of it. So, you know, we have to we we have to adjust everything with that. So, you know, if your dollar amount is seven fifty or your dollar amount is a thousand dollars, so be it. You know, if, if the if the repair costs more than a thousand dollars, you're just gonna replace the unit. I get it. New equipment's not expensive, or I said that completely backwards. New equipment has gotten expensive. But just the same with that, parts themselves have gotten expensive. Labor rates have gotten expensive. I mean, go look at a, uh, how much a gallon of gas is right now. Go look at how much a gallon of milk is. You know, everything's expensive. And we've talked about this in some of the other videos, just the same, that the prices of everything are escalating. So, you know, new systems are more expensive. It does come the time we have to make that decision, though. You know, if the unit is 12, 15 years or older, yeah, I'm not, me personally, I'm not going to put $1,000 in it. Me personally, I wouldn't put $500 in it. 
um, you know, especially if we are at that 15 year mark, you know, national average life expectancy is around 15 years uh, for a conventional heating and cooling equipment. Um, so if it does get to that dollar amount, whatever yours is, if yours is a thousand, mine's 500, you know, if I hit over that mark and it's 15 years old, I'm going to be looking at getting a new one. Um, because at that point we have a new equipment. Most of them have new warranties. You know, a lot of this equipment out there is coming with 10 year part and labor warranty. It's coming with unit replacement warranty, lifetime compressor, lifetime heat exchanger, um, and all these other awesome things that these manufacturers and the contractors are doing. So, you know, there, it, it's, it, it's pretty much worry free for a lot of years, as long as you're having maintenance done, which just like all the other videos, I always talk about maintenance, get your maintenance done on your equipment. Uh, I've seen a couple comments on some of the ones I talked about. It's like, oh, it's too expensive to have maintenance done. No, that's a bunch of crap. Sorry to say it that way, but it is. Maintenance is well worth the investment. And, you know, we're spending a lot of money on this equipment. So you want to make sure it's being maintained. You want to make sure somebody's looking after it, keeping it clean, keeping it efficient, all that kind of stuff. So that's my soapbox for the minute about uh, maintenance. But either way, if, you know, you're having maintenance done and keeping this thing up to date, and somebody's checking it out, make sure it's running, you know, you're going to have pretty much problem free or worry free if you've got these 10 year or longer warranties that are out there. So, you know, with that new piece of equipment, you don't have to worry so much about, well, am I going to come home from work today? My air conditioner's not working. It happens to be 95 degrees outside and my air quit. Yeah, that's, that's a bad day. So, you know, make sure, you know, the reliability is there because that's the other thing you get 15 years or more the reliability is not there. You don't know when it's going to work and you don't know when it's going to stop working. Um, and I'm not telling everybody that at 15 years, the thing just fall, falls over and gives up. I tell our clients that, that, you know, that doesn't mean that by any means. It doesn't mean the day it turns 15 years old, you have to throw it away and spend the money to buy a new one. That's not the case. I know where there's units that are way older than that, that still look like the day they were taken out of the box. Those are far and few in between. I can tell you that from experience. There's not as many of those out there as you would think that there is. You know, lack of maintenance um, and, and just abuse and wear and tear. These things do break down. And once we get into that age group, you know, we don't know how reliable it is. Because everybody always says, well, how long will it last? I got no idea. I mean, it, it could last two hours. It could last two days, two weeks, or two years. I don't know. It's going to quit when it wants to quit. And guaranteed that is always going to be on the coldest or the hottest day of the year in the middle of the night on a weekend. And it's going to cost a fortune to have it fixed. So, you know, reliability with that new system is there as well as efficiency. I mean, think about it. If you buy a system today in 15, 20 years from now, is it going to be just as efficient as what a new one is in 20 years? No, of course not. You know, they are progressing these things further and further. I mean, by the day, our industry is changing so rapidly that, you know, we are getting more efficient, we're getting more reliable, uh, safer, all this different kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it's kind of an energy savings to upgrade. You know, we, we don't have to worry about it as much because uh, we've got the warranties. Uh, we're running a little more efficient, so maybe it'll help the uh, utility bill, that kind of thing. You know, there's so many pros to replacing, and I am... I am not here by any means to tell you, you need to replace your equipment. You know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm some guy that talks on YouTube. I'm not selling any one of you anything. Unless somebody wants to advertise and like sponsor me, some of the cool people like Field Peace or Back Rack or, you know, Yellow Jacket, some of those like that. I will sell stuff for you. Um, but, you know, in reality, I'm not trying to sell you an air conditioner. I'm not telling you, you have to replace it every time either. But you do have to look at all these variables when the time comes, is it time to replace or is it time to repair? Dollar amount is always my big thing. You know, mine, like I said, my cutoff point is $500. If that thing's too, if that furnace is 20 years old and it's going to cost me $500 or $750 to fix it, I might as well use that as a down payment on a new one. Um, you know, most contractors out there now, uh, they offer financing, they offer all kinds of um, different incentive programs to be able to purchase new equipment, make it easier on the homeowner and that kind of thing. Uh, there's all kinds of um, different credits and things like that out there that you can get. And, you know, your salesperson can help you with that. They can walk through all the steps. Hopefully they are up to date. Uh, on what all the different things are um, with the rebates and, and different things and incentives to help you be able to purchase it more easily. But like I said, you don't have to replace. You can always repair. 
but just make sure it's worth it. You know, a 20 year old air conditioner is not worth a thousand dollars in parts to put in it because a 20 year old air conditioner, you don't know how much longer you're going to get out of it. So if you are in that spot, uh, I hope this helps a little bit. I know it's a, a quick video about, you know, repair versus replace. And that is up to each and every one of you individually. That's not, you know, something I can say, oh, you need to replace right now or just replace, just fix it. Don't even worry about it. You know, that's not something I can tell you. you it depends on your situation and, uh, you know, all these variables that come in there, like your budget, how old is the equipment, how how is the lifespan of this unit been spent? You know, is it in a, um, is it in a, a wet basement? It's all rusted out and falling apart or is it, you know, pristine condition. And so it looks like the day came out of the box. You know, you have to look at all these things and you need to find a contractor that has service techs and salespeople that can help you honestly evaluate this system and say, okay, this is why it would be better to fix, or this is why it'd be better to replace. But that's the important key with all of this stuff on all of these videos that you see is that's the important key is finding that contractor, that service tech, that salesperson, that installer, whatever it is, find the person with that company that is honest with you, open with you, and can explain it all just like it needs to be done. You want somebody that can help you evaluate that system and decide what's best for your situation. I mean, that's what it is, and that's what we should be doing. So hopefully you guys have somebody like that. Uh, if you don't, keep looking. We're out here, I promise. Uh, there's plenty of them out there, so just keep looking. I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, give it a big thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you share it with a friend because it's the right thing to do. And also subscribe. Definitely subscribe. It means more than anything. we got a goal we want to hit uh, here pretty quick. It's coming up fast. I want to make sure we hit that. And when you get done with this, be sure to check out the Starter Ranch. Again, hashtag the Starter Ranch and you can find us. Uh, there's going to be some cool stuff on there. We're just getting it started. So bear with us on some of the the videos and how we're doing things with the intros and outros and all that kind of stuff. But it's going to be an awesome channel. Uh, once we get everything up full blown and, and rolling along, we've already had a bunch of views and several subscribers, but we just need a little more. So hashtag the starter ranch and be sure to subscribe to Andy's Corner HVAC. Thank you and God bless.